Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stand Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii with Robert in the control room and Cindy here on the studio making me look handsome, which is a challenge all by itself. Anyway, I'm glad you're here with us today, and I've got a pretty interesting topic, one that's near and dear to my heart because uh, things tend to be more challenging nowadays, and I just thought it was my old age creeping up on me, but it, there's other reasons for it, so we'll get into that discussion. But first of all, let me start off with some hydrogen uh, information. I just got my newsletter from um, a gentleman named Maury Markowitz, and he runs the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association. And he, if you, if you go online and you look up the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association and look for their newsletter, it's just chock-a-block full of great hydrogen news, everything from Toyota running uh, fleets of uh, cabs in, in the UK to uh, new two megawatt systems going online in Europe. Um, just all kinds of things going on the, around the world in hydrogen, which are all good for me uh, because I love hydrogen. And we just had a talk with Shell Oil and also with Hitachi this week um, to try and talk to folks about what they can contribute here in Hawaii to bring it on, bringing on our hydrogen infrastructure. So it's been a busy week for me, and um, I'm looking forward to working with all these big companies and uh, the uh, Hydrogen Council uh, doing international work to get hydrogen mainstreamed and scaled up to where it should be to help us solve our fossil fuel addiction, get rid of some fossil fuels and get us on some cleaner energy. So uh, look up that, uh, that um, newsletter again. It's a Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association. So today's show, we're, uh, we're going back to Maui and we're gonna visit a gentleman, uh, Lee Chamberlain, who we talked to from Ride Smart Maui. Uh, we talked to him a couple weeks ago and um, had a good good talk about um, bikes and electric bikes and uh, you know the advantages, disadvantages, different styles, different equipment that you can get that uh, make bike a, a real transportation piece, not just the old lycra spandex uh, jump on and race like a madman around the islands, but uh, a really utilitarian vehicle. And you know, bicycles have long been known to be the most efficient type of uh, mechanical transportation you can come up with. Uh, and, and it's really a good way to go. We see a lot more people riding the beakies around town here, so that's good. And we'll get those folks back on the show to talk about their successes. But uh, right now, we've got Lee Chamberlain calling in from Maui. And uh, Lee, welcome to the show. And uh, thanks for being on with us again. Well, thanks for having me again, Stan. It's great to be back again. And uh, congratulations on the progress you're making with hydrogen. And, um, you know, again, I'm back here working on my a uh, little part of uh, trying to implement a clean energy here with the electric bicycle and reduce the uh, footprint of the automobile by substituting vehicle mount miles traveled with the uh, potential of utilizing the bicycle or the electric bicycle, which is even probably more efficient than the regular bicycle. But anyway, thanks. I'm glad to be back. It's good to have you back on. and. Uh... Uh, you know, it's it's funny because we've we've talked before offline about um, the processes that you need to go through to to make things happen, and you know we've kind of had a a, um, a boost from all of our county mayors and the governor who have stood up and said they want to support the uh, Paris Accords on climate change and all the initiatives there. So they've kind of made the public statement that they're all in on supporting clean energy and clean transportation. And um, I, I think that we're all trying to take advantage of that uh, upswing in their interest and their commitment. Um, but sometimes dealing with the politicians is a lot more sunny than dealing with the bureaucracy that works for the politicians. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And um, I, I'll start off by saying, you know, Servco, uh, the, the folks that, that have a couple auto dealerships here on Oahu uh, doing Toyota, uh, big company, they don't just do cars, they do all kinds of things. Um, they made the commitment here in Hawaii to uh, bring on their hydrogen station along with their Toyota Mirai vehicles at their dealership. And you know, people don't really give, I think, enough credit to that company for making that kind of commitment. It's not a 10, 10 or $20,000 commitment. It's a couple million dollar commitment to clean energy in Hawaii. But it's taken them almost two years to get their station online. And some of that has to do with, you know, going through the first the first time ever hydrogen station build outside the military bases here on Oahu. 
but I know Mitch Ewan up at the university is going through the same kind of thing. We're getting, getting permits through the county and uh, getting clearances and environmental issues met. And, um, you know, there there's always seems to be something that you have to go and, and put in uh, your plans and have them reviewed by somebody and give them a bunch of data. And that just seems to slow things down. In my, in my younger days, I did construction. And I remember the days when you could take in a hand-drawn sketch to the building department downtown at the county. And at the end of the week, you're already, you know, doing work and putting the building up. Um, I think those days are kind of long gone. There's a lot of different areas you have to go and visit. And um, especially now with more planned communities, uh, Lee's starting to run into some of these issues on, on Maui. So Lee, why don't you tell us about uh, some of the projects that you've been trying to support over there on Maui and, and some of the challenges that you run into? Well, Stan, um, one of the things that um, happened a number of years ago was as I uh, got interested in going ahead and, and uh, trying to implement alternative uh, routing for bicycles that are safe and and, uh, and those would call, of course, include pedestrians. And uh, we got involved with uh, Hawaii Bicycling League and then uh, became a sub-chapter of the Hawaii Bicycling League over here and we call ourselves the Maui Bicycling League. And uh, with that, we've gone ahead and um, made some headways in getting funding for projects that have been in the works for a long period of time. And uh, the many of the projects that were begun under previous leadership were basically dropped and stalemated. And we were able to go ahead and get funding to complete some of those projects that were basically stagnated. And uh, in addition to that, I've come become aware of different projects uh, specific that, um, to the Maui and where I live on the west side. And that particular project, uh, that I've been working on most exclusively is the West Maui Greenway. And the West Maui Greenway has um, uh, been an educational experience for me, to say the least. So, um, so can you describe we, that West Maui Greenway in terms of where it goes from and to and, and what route it follows? Yes, yeah, so the West Maui Greenway, which is outlined in the Hawaii Bike Plan in 1990, was supposed to be a priority one project to go ahead and avert any kind of uh, future congestion that they were projecting, okay? And so that, meaning that that particular project was supposed to be completed within six years. And, and, and we're looking back at 1990. And 30 years, 30 years later, we're still not there, is what you're telling me. We're still not there, yeah. and, um, and I seem to have kind of run up against the wall again after bringing it to the attention of the county and pushing very, very hard to get it implemented. And of course, West Maui is famous for its traffic congestion now, uh, which maybe could have been averted, some of it could have been averted with the bikeways. But my um, focus and direction has been to try to establish a pilot and, and get data to go ahead and substantiate, you know, the money is necessary to go ahead and build a greenway. And we had a number of, um, uh, different programs in place, and we created uh, a charrette to focus on the uh, subject, and we brought people from all uh, members of the government and gave them test rides on the Greenway and everything. And again, it's the West Maui Greenway, which is a cane haul road, which parallels the Hanapalani Highway, and literally will go 26 miles all the way from the Pali to Lapua Point, so we could have, and was supposed to be a um, bikeway on the existing Cane Hall Road, which is not being utilized at all and exists and is in place and used to be utilized for heavy trucks to transport to the, the produce, whether it be the pineapple or the sugar cane or whatever, to the different um, stations for processing. So this road is very impregnated into the ground and has been there a long, long time and exists and would be nothing to go ahead and take over and utilize for bicycles and pedestrians yeah, who, as who, outlined in the Hawaii Bike Plan. Who, who owns that um, that easement right now if it's no longer used by uh, by the yeah. sugarcane folks? Is that owned by the state? So, or? Well, part of it's owned by the state, part of it's owned by the county, part of it's owned by private uh, ownership. Um, there's one individual named Peter Martin that we worked with exclusively. 
uh, to, uh, in the beginning, and uh, that was a 5.6 mile stretch from Ola Walla to Lahaina. And that particular uh, stretch was actually owned half by the county at that time, or was projected to be owned by half by the county and half by Peter Martin. Peter Martin has always been a supporter of the, the greenways and, uh, and uh, those type of uh, avenues. As a matter of fact, he made uh, one through his development in Lonnie Poco many years ago and still exists. It's a beautiful uh, trail that is the only trail that is on the west side that's exclusive to bicycle pedestrian pathway. Anyway, um, he was a supporter of the program, and so then we started trying to get the county to be part of the, and create a public-private partnership to implement the Greenway. And then uh, Peter was so behind the project, he said he would pay for part of the project himself and committed himself to do that. And then um, what happened was is that uh, we had a charrette and the mayor came and, and one of his words to me at the end of the, his presentation following the charrette was is, you know, when you to do this, you've got to keep it simple. Okay, that's, those were his parting words to me. And so uh, we, he managed to go ahead and, and uh, provide a million and a half dollars in the 2016 budget for the actual um, design and implementation of the Greenway. But this, then when is, it got this is the council, mayor. This is the mayor, right? This is the mayor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor and Powell. And then when it got to council, um, we had a contingent of people there for the entire day dressed in orange shirts so we couldn't be missed. So we filled the, the auditorium uh, at the council chambers anyway with orange shirts from the very beginning, 8 o'clock in the morning, until we were there until 7, 8 o'clock at night, and that was during the budget hearings. And Ricky Okama, the head of the, the um, budget hearings, um, but they had an agenda, and the bikeways was way down agenda. And as it got late into the evening, Ricky graciously went ahead and, and brought and jumped the agenda item bikeways up, the West Mike Greenway specifically, up, up the uh, agenda list and uh, made hearing to uh, what they want to do with, with the million and a half dollars that the mayor proposed. And so he asked uh, at that time, David Good, the public works director, oh, what do you think about the million and a half dollar proposal for the West Mike Greenway? And then David Good's response was, is that there is no way that we could possibly plan, so this I'm talking about public works, there's no way that they can possibly plan, design, and implement a greenway within a year and a half, which was what the CIP funding was, was uh, required for, okay? so. So Ricky says to David, well, what do you suggest? He says, okay, I'll take $300,000 and I'll do the planning and design for the West Mile Greenway and then we can go ahead and move on to implementation. So I thought that was a big win. You know, I mean, yeah. great. We got $300,000, not a million and a half. We got $300,000 towards planning design. And, uh, and then we move along for a year and a half and uh, David kicks his can down the road, literally, and um, uh, I find out from the engineers that the public works department can't plan and design a greenway because they don't have the tools in their toolbox, is a quote from one of the engineers, the lead engineer on this particular project, that they don't have the tools in their toolbox to plan and design a greenway, so they have to farm it out to an outside engineering firm and it takes a scope of work to do that. So uh, literally, they kicked this can down the road for a year and a half before they actually created a scope of work, which they finally uh, gave to this engineering firm, outside engineering firm. And when I finally saw the scope of work, I was livid. I mean, I can't, couldn't believe it. So basically what happened was is that they, uh, the public works shifted from the 5.6 miles original uh, West Mike Greenway design that we had had to shred on and the mayor gave them money for originally and all that, he shifted it uh, without any discussion with me to a different place, uh, which was the sugarcane train tracks and went from 5.6 miles to 7 tenths of a mile. And then when I see the scope of work, I noticed that it had 
six different taskings. And the first tasking, which is a, a uh, design that is a, um, going to spend $300,000 for a visionary design, $24,000 of that is going to go towards aerial photography, okay, for seven-tenths of a mile. And um, the rest is going for the design of a 10-foot wide path that's two inches thick on an existing roadbed of as you know, yeah. asphalt. And uh, then when questioned, why is this costing so much money? And the answer was because that we are subject to civil litigation. The county knows they're going to be sued, and so they have to go through all these elements to go ahead and minimize their liability at the end when the actual uh, route or uh, roadway is actually in place. Okay. Okay. This I, is the I, excuse. Okay, Lee, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break here, and when we come back, we'll throw up some graphics that uh, kind of lead and you know, let people see what you're talking about visually. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at one called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour here on Think Tech Hawaii. Stan Energy Man with Lee Chamberlain over on Maui, who's um, been describing a rather frustrating process that I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say is started 30 years ago with a bike plan um, that was pretty well set out. Hey, Lee, there's no bridges or anything that have to be built on this bikeway, right? It was all uh, Cane Hall Road that no. was already existing. Okay, so yeah. So the story is we, we've got a, a, a bikeway, um, greenway plan from 1990 that um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many mayors we've had since then, but uh, I guess you just divide by four or something, um, but a lot. Boku mayors have, have gone through and council people have looked at this stuff. And here we are 30 years later and still no bikeway. And bottom line is it's been from county planning to kicked over to the private sector to moved off of the, the, um, the cane hall roads onto railroad tracks, which I don't know, maybe that's better in terms of substrate, but it's narrower too, um, different land issues. But the bottom line is you get back to, well, we might get sued, you know, and that's kind of where the title of the, the uh, segment today came in. You know, I see a lot of the problems that we're addressing here, whether they be permitting or regulatory or whatever, stem from people who have either abused the system, shortcut the system, or been hurt by this, you know, by lack of, uh, of uh, sticking to code or whatever, and who gets sued? The city, the state, the private landowner. And even though, at least shared with me, there's a, there's a state law that's supposed to protect, especially private landowners who let people cross their private land um, without any threat of liability, but apparently that doesn't hold a whole lot of water and you can still be sued um, by someone hurt on your property if you're transiting it um, in a recreational mode and not being charged for it, you can still go back to the landowner. So it gets back to, you know, is tort reform one of the things that, that we really need to look at as a state to see if uh, that would help solve uh, some of these issues? So let's throw up uh, one of the graphics that shows this greenway. And um, what we've got up, Lee, is the, uh, the one with the colored string diagrams with the different proposals and the yellow, uh, the yellow at the bottom is the existing highway. 
Um, and then the purple, blue, and red roads are the, um, the, different, the different options, I guess, that were first proposed. And, um, and it shows kind of where it covers between, would you say Lahaina or it goes past Lahaina? Well, I, I can't see what you've right. actually got up. I sent you a couple different maps, but I think the one you have right now is the, the new Lahaina bypass, which I'm, I'm proud to say that the state of the uh, DOT, Department of Transportation, was kind enough to go ahead and graciously implement a uh, parallel bikeway on the new extension, Greenway extension, correction, the bypass extension on the behind the bad pass, which is 2.7 miles. So what happened was is um, we've been trying to put in place here a bypass for probably 40 years, I guess, and we finally got two segments in place. And this last segment, um, I was able to testify prior to them giving the green light to go ahead and implement it, uh, which they just finally completed a, a few weeks ago. But um, in doing so, I, I emphasize the fact that we need to go ahead and have a parallel bikeway on the bypass there because uh, otherwise bikers won't have a place to, to ride and they can't cross the uh, bypass easily on the old road and so consequently it would be makes, it makes sense to have a bikeway there and we do have a lot of people biking on the highway the recreational bicyclists. And so they went and put it in. And amazingly, the difference between the state DOT and the county was, is when they committed to doing it, I had the plan in my hand the next morning. They went ahead and sent me a CAD drawing with the bikeway that they were gonna go ahead and build overnight. So the technology is there to do these kind of things, but I don't know what's going on in the county that doesn't enable them to do the same thing where they have to farm these things out to an outside engineering firm. And uh, I didn't finish. The fact is, is that on the current status with West Mountain Greenway, the outside engineering firm has five more taskings to go before they actually get to implementation and every one of those taskings, of course, is going to have another large nomination associated with it. But um, currently, we're, we're under the uh, first phase, the first tasking of the scope of work for the seven-tenths of a mile on the Greenway. So kudos to State DOT, and I know Ford Fujigami is up in the governor's office now, and in, in the um, DOT is uh, under under new management down there, but I, I'm certain that this transpired under Ford's uh, leadership because, quite frankly, when I look at the, all the state departments, um, he's probably one of the most uh, progressive, lean forward directors that the state has. And, you know, transportation is his thing, but making bikeways isn't in his wheelhouse. Um, making electric cars isn't in his wheelhouse. But yet his department took on not only your project, but took on the uh, sustainable transportation um, working group that was put together to help relieve traffic and clean up our, our air. So kudos to Ford and, and the folks that work with him for, for doing what he did for you. Um, but you're right. I, I mean, I've, I went online and for 160 bucks, I bought a piece of software that could design a house. And you could do the three-dimensional dollhouse view, look inside the walls, the framing, everything. And I was amazed, you can even access catalogs online now with specific pieces of, uh, of furniture or refrigerators or appliances or sinks and things. That technology has gone leaps and bounds. And I think it's time that maybe our county folks um, take a good look at uh, pulling their head out of uh, the T-square and drafting table mode and, and start looking at some of this software and implementing it. Because obviously the states figured that out and they're, they're doing it. So. Um, but we, we have a lot of pieces moving in here. You've got public hearings that have to be gone through. Um, and again, you have that, that, that tort piece hanging over your head. I, and I don't know, uh, some leaders are okay about accepting risk and saying it's, it's, good for the, it's good for the city, it's good for the county, it's good for the state. Let's, let's take the, the risk and do it. We know we're going to get sued anyway if somebody gets hurt. 
you know, that's part of doing business. You, the only way you can avoid risk is not doing something. If you don't want to crash airplanes, don't fly any. If you don't want to have car accidents, don't drive any cars. So it's easy to say no, but it's, it takes a good leader to say yes. So if I could put it in a nutshell, it sounds like what you're asking for, Lee, is for leaders to step up and be leaders and, and say, hey, I know there's risk here, but we got to get it done. Exactly, and uh, but then again, you know, you need to go ahead and start looking back at uh, what uh, was perhaps frivolous, okay, the word frivolous, frivolous lawsuits, okay, and so I know that the county has a staff of attorneys that are on, they're paid to go ahead and, and review these things and defend the county and all that, and I just think that um, when the attorneys are being licensed, they should be educated on the fact that they are crippling progress by being able to prosper themselves through litigation, okay? And so part of the licensing process, I think, should be that the attorneys have limitations to suing government entities because they feel that or think that, that they have bottomless pits of money. Okay, i.e., the taxpayer's money. And so we need to go ahead and stand up to this litigation authority that has been provided and, and, and cultivated by the lawmakers, of whom the majority are attorneys who take care of themselves, you know. So I think that is uh, something that needs to be thought of seriously and, and um, you know. I don't know exactly what the answers are because obviously that would involve a lot of uh, discussion and litigation in itself. Yeah. I don't and think we're going to solve done by attorney. I don't think so we're going to solve I, that I problem here, Lee. <laughs> I agree. No. I don't think we're going to solve that one ourselves. But I'll, I'll just give you an observation that I've had. When you have more lawyers in the yellow pages than you have doctors, you know you're you're on mm -hmm. the road to a problem. And uh, and quite frankly, I think if you look in the in the Hawaiian telephone directory, you'll see more lawyers. And I have great friends that are lawyers. I mean, Rachel James, who works with me, is going to be a lawyer someday. But I know she's going to be mm -hmm. a really good lawyer. Um, but we need lawyers. We need them to do their job. And I guess what we're asking is that we ask them to focus on the positive side of getting things done. I mean, just in the news this week, we've had McDonald's sued by two people for putting cheese on one of their hamburgers and charging them for it. And, and it... It's like, really? I mean, that's, that's worth going to court over? And another guy that, that the parents had to sue the 30-year-old kid to kick him out of the house because they couldn't get him out of the house. Well, that's bad parenting to begin with, but the court's not the place to do that kind of stuff. And maybe the courts are just tying up too much time, like you say, with lawyers who are looking for work. And we need to kind of get past that and get to where we get government done and, and serve the people. They're supposed to be working for us. It's our taxpayer money that they're spending and not spend all the time saying no just because they're afraid of a lawsuit. So believe it or not, Lee, we've, we've blown through a half hour already and we've just scratched the surface, but you know, I'm glad to see you made some progress over there on Maui and we're looking forward to seeing your, your Greenway go through. Thanks to the state DOT for, uh, for pressing forward. Um, time for Maui City Council or County Council to step up and, and help you out and the mayor over there um, and pick up and start doing something. So. That's our plea from, uh, at least from Stan the Energy Man and from Lee Chamberlain is to, you know, put on the big boy pants and, and get some leadership done over there. And we appreciate the leadership that is getting done by Ford Fujigami and, and the folks over here. So I'll let you finish with the last couple of words, Lee, and then we'll, we're gonna have to sign off. Well, again, Stan, thanks a lot for having me. And I really appreciate to uh, have the opportunity to go ahead and tell my story over here. And um, I'm hoping that this is just an, another way to get the word out to the public, that get the public behind and understanding the uh, the difficulties associated with trying to accomplish anything. And, and, and it all comes down to public support. To get anything done here, I was told from the very beginning, everything requires public support. So. Be an activist if you want to get something done and think about supporting some of the plans that have been in place for many years that actually benefit the community and the state and the world. Good words from Lee Chamberlain over on Maui. Well, that'll do it for Stan Energy Man this week. And thanks to Lee for being on the show and Robert in the control room and, and Cindy out here for keeping me straight. 
And uh, we'll see you next week on Stanton Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.